Hey everyone, so Frontier just dropped their latest update and they gave us a couple of new ships to play with. This is obviously the Crate Mark II and I thought this would be the one I would look at first. I actually plan on doing a couple of builds for this. Uh, one is going to be a sort of a general purpose gopher utility ship type build. Uh, slash maybe exploration build uh, because I you know my, my first thoughts about the ship is that that's probably what the ship will be best for um, but I was also you know planning on doing a combat build on it just to see how how it did for that and, and that's actually what I've done here this my, my first build for this is an engineered uh, combat build and honestly, I didn't think I would like it very much because generally I'm not a fan of general purpose ships for combat. I mean, I like, you know, I like specialty ships for combat. I like, you know, I love my Chieftain for combat. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, you know, this, this ship will not replace my Chieftain or, you know, maybe the Challenger when I get around to uh, engineering one of those. I'm, I'm sure that will be my go-to ship for bounty hunting, but um, this is probably going to be my pirate ship. Uh, lately, I've also been uh, kind of experimenting with a clipper as a pirate ship and doing some uh, NPC uh, low-temperature diamond uh piracy and that's actually kind of interesting and fun and i but i think this ship is going to be a lot better than the clipper as a pirate ship and uh so anyway uh what i plan to do that's going to be my long-term plans for this and if it works out good i'm going to do some videos on that what i plan to do in this video mainly is just go over uh, the way I've built and configured this ship and uh, then we're gonna you know I'm gonna let you guys see how it behaves in a has res and uh, you know you can decide if maybe you might want to use this as a for bounty hunting or combat I mean it's not bad it's a, it's absolutely not bad as a bounty hunter in a has res site but it's just not you know it's not nearly as good as a specialty combat ship. But anyway, uh, I'm going to briefly go over my build, try not to drone on or, you know, get too far off track, and then I'm going to let you guys uh, see for yourself how it does in combat. All right, I want to go through the build briefly before I show you some combat highlights and... Uh, as always, you know, if you've got any questions, I would refer to Anara, which is what I basically use to, uh, as my guide to engineering. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and look at hard points. As you can see by the little scales of justice there, I had a, uh, some stray fire uh, happened while I was out in the Hazrez and I accidentally destroyed somebody so I'm kind of cool in my heels right now till I can till my notoriety goes down and I can go uh, get everything cleared up but at any rate uh, you can see my loadout here I mean you know and you can see that I'm really not having any kind of power issues with this so you know I, I really think for this ship, weapons are a matter could be a matter of preference. I mean, I like I like multi cannons and beams because uh, you know, especially if you've got a ship with a big power plant and a uh, and a nice power distributor, which this has, uh, you you can fire these weapons all day long. Uh, but anyway, let's just to briefly go over what I've done here. So my multi cannons, I've got basically overcharged on all of those, and you're going to get that from this guy, and he's easy to unlock. 
see unlock requirements right there and let's go to multi cannon overcharged level five you can see this is what you need for uh, materials as far as uh, experimental effects go I mean that's I think for this that's really gonna be up to you you know normally if I was running all multi cannons I would go for uh, incendiary rounds on at least one or two of the multi cannons to help take down shields since I've got beam lasers on this you know you really don't don't need that uh, you know the other experimental effects I like to use sometimes for multi cannons are auto loader just because I like to be able to continuously fire and the one thing I find annoying about multi cannons is that reload cycle so if you have auto loader you don't have to worry about that you know you, you can continuously fire for the most part I mean eventually if you're if you're firing a lot you will still run out of uh, ammo occasionally but or, or have to pause and do a full load but anyway you know that really cuts down on that um, obviously corrosive shell is uh, is really great to have on at least one multi cannon uh, but anyway that's you know you can pretty much pick whatever you want to on that uh, moving on to uh, beam lasers so there are a couple of ways or maybe a couple of stages if you're brand new uh, a couple of stages to upgrading beam lasers uh, the dweller here you can get up to level three upgrades he's pretty easy to unlock so you know if you're and you need him for other things too you're gonna need him to upgrade your power distributor so <clears throat> If you're a new player, I would recommend concentrating on getting the Dweller unlocked. And you can get uh, Grade 3 Efficient Beams, which are pretty good. It's, it's going to make uh, it's gonna make Beam Lasers a viable weapon for you. But eventually you're going to want to get this guy, Brew Tarquin, unlocked. And I'll let you... I'll put on, hold on this for a minute so you guys can see basically what your uh, material requirements are going to be all right uh, and, and I guess while we're here we'll go ahead and talk about experimental effects um, you know I would say a couple of things that you can do here that might be well you know honestly depending on your play style there are a lot of different uh, experimental effects that might be interesting for you generally I use either uh, thermal conduit or thermal vent would be useful if you fly in wings you know some of these other ones might be useful like regeneration and that sort of thing uh, anyway let's go over here and we'll briefly look at what it takes to unlock your level 5 upgrades brew tarquin <clears throat> it's not that hard this is definitely not hard to do this is not really hard it's just kind of a pain in the butt uh, fujin tea is a rare commodity you can only get it at one place you can only get it in very limited quantities it will take you several trips in order to accumulate uh, 50 units and unlock this guy so you know, I would I would put that kind of as a long-term goal. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and move along to <coughs> utility mounts. Uh, you know, I've got a kill warrant scanner. Uh, as I mentioned in the intro, I am probably would use this as a pirate ship rather than a bounty hunting ship. So if I do that, I'm probably going to lose the kill warrant scanner and and put another uh shield booster in here or maybe point defense 
Uh, but anyway, so uh, as far as what I'm doing for shield boosters, we'll look here. I've got, so basically I've got one heavy duty. This is a heavy duty uh, shield booster. This is a thermal resistance uh, shield booster. And we'll look at where you can get those upgrades. All right, so I'm getting <clears throat> I'm getting my shield booster upgrades, and they're only level three. I'm getting them from this guy because he's relatively easy to unlock, especially if you do any kind of trading. Uh, let's go ahead and look at shield booster. So yeah, I've got heavy duty. And you can see material requirements for that. And the reason I don't have level 5 is because this is the only guy that offers level 5 upgrades. And as you can see, he's he's one of those guys like Brutark one who uh, requires, you know, 50 units of a rare commodity in order to unlock him so it it's just it's not going to be that hard to unlock him it's but it is going to be kind of boring and tedious and so i just haven't gotten around to unlocking him yet because he doesn't really offer that's the only thing he offers he doesn't offer another upgrade so you know eventually i'll probably unlock him but as of yet i haven't uh so let's go back and look at so yeah the other the other thing I've uh, upgrade I've got on my other shield booster is a thermal resistance and uh, you know the reason when I first started doing this I would have gone with like uh, all heavy duty upgrades and just have that raw shield power but it turns out that a lot of NPCs and I'm mostly just do uh, you know PVE type combat it seems like most NPCs are going to use energy weapons to take your shields down. So it makes sense to boost your thermal resistance, which, like I said, that's that's what I've done here. Uh, so I'm running uh, thermal resistance grade 3. And anyway, you can see these are the material requirements. If you got any other questions... I would really urge you to go to uh, Anara. It's a fantastic resource for engineering. Yeah, you know I can't say enough that you know who the the, the guys that run the site they are fantastic. Uh, all right. So let's move on. to core internals. You know, I haven't really haven't done anything with the hull itself, and I'm not really sure if I'm if I will or not. If I did, I'd probably uh, do just like a general, you know, heavy duty hull upgrade. Um, I haven't done anything to the power plant because, as you can see, power does not seem to be an issue here. You know, if you tried to run like a build with all beam weapons or something like that, it might be might be an issue, but I doubt it. Um, so, really important upgrade here is thrusters, which, as you can see, I've got level 5 dirty drive tunings. And this is another one of those things, if you're new to the game, you may not, you're not going to be able to get level 5 dirty drives uh, right off the bat. I'll, I'll kind of show you how I ended up doing that when I was uh, started unlocking engineers. The f this engineer is pretty useful. Primarily, you're going to want to unlock her for uh, FSD upgrades, but she also offers various other upgrades and even her level one upgrades like power like power plant upgrade level one you'd think yeah that's not worth getting 
if you're running a Vulture, a level one power plant upgrade is the difference between having uh, a combat ship that's not really all that useful to having one that you can run a lot of different weapons on because the Vulture is a great fighter, but it's seriously underpowered. Uh, and even a level one overcharge upgrade will help a lot. But so, so anyway, uh, getting back to what we're dealing with here, uh, thrusters. So take a look at Dirty Drive Thrusters. She will give you up to level three, and that's definitely an upgrade that's worth getting until you can get Professor Palin unlocked. Uh, so these are your material requirements. Scroll up so you can see your level fives. Um, see, as far as experimental effects, I'm not running any experimental effects. I know a lot of people seem to like this drag drives as an experimental effect. I haven't really played around with it. Um, but, you know, you can... <coughs> You can make your own decisions about that, but anyway, like I said, you know, if you're first starting out, you can you can get uh, up to level three pretty easily. Go ahead and briefly look at what it takes to unlock Professor Palin. Uh, you know, this is not all that really all that difficult to do. I mean, you're gonna have to do a little traveling, as you can see. But if you do any kind of exploration and I would really urge you to do some exploration if you're a new player. It's an easy way to make a lot of money. <clears throat> if you do it correctly, I would um, Google Road to Riches. It's a great way to make some money early on if you're having trouble doing that. And then uh, this, but the unlock requirement itself here is provide 25 units of sensor uh, fragments. That's going to involve going to a Thargoid crash site, if I remember correctly. It's not hard to do. And, uh, you know, and, and it's well worth getting when, you, you know, it's well worth unlocking him for these level 5 thruster upgrades. But, like I said, in the meantime, you can get some decent upgrades from Felicity Farce here. And speaking of Felicity Farce here, uh, you're going to want to unlock her for your FSD upgrades and you know this isn't essential for combat but if you're going to use this as a pirate ship you're going to be moving around a lot and you would definitely want to have a you know a decent jump range so you know I've got level 5 with deep charge alright let's pull an R back up And so, yeah, you can get this from Felicity Farseer, increased range. So, you know, like I said, she's easy to, to unlock. She's probably going to be one of the first engineers that you unlock. These are materials that you're going to need to get the upgrades. Uh, and yeah, I would recommend as an experimental effect using this deep charge you know because it, it says right here what it what it actually does is maximum jump fuel per jump it, by it increases it by 10 percent and that's going to translate to a greater jump range and you know the the only thing that i remember as far as uh materials go that's remotely difficult to get is uh data mind wake exception You're just going to have to get a wake scanner and scan a bunch of wakes in order to uh, get those materials. All right, so let's move on. The so the other important upgrade here is your power distributor, obviously for uh, combat performance. Um, you know the only other potential uh, engineering upgrades that I would do at all here is maybe for life support and sensors and I might put like a lightweight the the uh, whatever that modification is for light I think it's called lightweight sensors and uh, life support it's basically just to help ex uh, to help increase your jump range 
you know, certainly not essential for combat. This is an essential upgrade for combat. Uh, I'll show you. So I've got charge enhanced power distributor. We'll pull the Nara back up. And you're going to get this from the Dweller. As you can see, he's like a level one engineer. So he's going to be really easy to, relatively easy to unlock. Uh, you can see here, it's not hard. Basically, you got to trade with five different black markets and pay the guy a fee for access. And as we discussed, or yeah, I, I, I guess we discussed previously, uh, he's going to be good for getting some mid-grade uh, weapon upgrades. And, but really what you want to unlock him for is for these uh, power distributor upgrades. And basically with a combat centered ship you can go two ways I would recommend charge enhanced you can see material requirements here uh, and charge enhanced just seems to work best but if for some reason you're having trouble sourcing these materials and sometimes <coughs> Excuse me, especially before uh, before we had material traders, uh, exquisite focus crystals could be really hard to come by. Uh, so, as an alternative, you can use weapon focused, which basically you get moderate penalties for your other. Uh, systems that's not ideal it's not but it, it's not really crippling uh, and you still get a great uh, buff for your weapon recharge rate and your weapon capacity and that's pretty nice to have uh, you know I, I would still say between these two charge enhanced is overall the best upgrade to get but this is definitely a viable alternative alright so let's move on to optional internals obviously the most important thing here is going to be shields and you can see I've got thermal resistance on the shields as I said before uh, you know when it, that's good because it seems like NPCs want to use energy weapons to take your shields down. So this makes it that, that much more difficult. Uh, and, I, you know, I guess another drawback to, like, you know, using uh, the mods that just kind of um, give you bigger raw shield capacity is generally the recharge on on those uh, modifications is a lot slower and you really need fast regeneration uh, in combat fast regeneration is a lot more useful than raw shield capacity and which is why I have fast charge as well coupled with by weave shields it means that your shields just yeah you don't have that raw uh, shield capacity that you might with uh, you know heavy duty or resistance uh, or general resistance enhanced shields but what you do have is much faster regen and like I said that just seems to work a lot better uh, let's go ahead and pull up Inara and you're gonna be able to get your uh, shield generator enhancements from Li Chung So yeah, and he's got some other, you know, good enhancements. Not you know, not for combat, but for other systems that are that are worth having if you like to do exploration. But as you can see, he is really not hard to unlock. 
at all. And we go to thermal resistance. And you can see these are going to be the materials that you need to gather. You know, ruthium, ruthenium, however you pronounce that. That's kind of hard to get, but not too bad, especially with material traders now. You can trade up to that if you're having problems, you know, getting that. Seems like, you know, some of these elements that basically you're going to find on, uh, you know, the surfaces of planets. Sometimes they're a little hard to come by, but not too bad. Uh, and like, like I said, the... Uh, Fast charge is what I would recommend as your experimental effect, especially if you're using biweaves. And as you can see here, uh, <laughs> I've accumulated, you know, and not even trying, but I've accumulated a lot of these materials, so they're not that hard to find, especially like things like this compound shielding and stuff. What you really need to do if you're... Uh, if you're doing a lot of combat, you know, especially bounty hunting, take a break every once in a while and look at those materials that the ships, the destroyed ships have dropped and scoop them up, you know, because that is going to, that's going to help you immensely as far as gathering materials goes for uh, engineering and upgrading. You just, you know, constantly think about it. And you don't even have to. The great thing about material traders now is you only have to get materials in a category. You don't have to find those specific materials. So, you know, if you can't find a rare material, it still pays to scoop up all those common materials because you can trade up to that rare material. And so, you know, that's that's that would be that's my uh, strategy is just always think about picking up resources whenever you have an opportunity to pick up or you know uh, pick up materials when you've got an opportunity to pick up materials because even common materials will help you because you can trade you can go to a material trader and trade up for those rare materials uh, all right so just a couple of other thoughts on this uh, so if I decide to use this as a pirate ship, I probably will not use a fighter here at all. I'll, I'll probably lose this fighter bay and uh, add, like, I'll add basically hatch breaker limpets, uh, collector limpets like I already have, and cargo racks, because that's basically what you're going to need for piracy. And so anyway, that that's that's probably my future plans for this ship um anyway now i'm gonna cut over to some combat footage
Deploying chaff. Deploying chaff. Power weapons. Tremendous. Enemy destroyed, Commander. 